Joining us now is Ken Klippenstein. He's a great partner of us. He's also a reporter over at The Intercept. It's great to see you, man. Hey, good to be with you guys. Ken, you've been at the forefront of reporting on this disinformation industrial complex. You came out with a brand new bombshell story. Let's go and put it up there on the screen. Quote, the government created a new disinformation office to oversee all the other ones. Uh, and you reveal here some new offices inside of the Pentagon that are tasked with, quote unquote, overseeing disinformation. So t tell us about these dystopian Orwellian uh, agencies being funded in our name, Ken. Okay, so if we want to we want to start with dystopian, let's talk about the one in the Pentagon, because mm -hmm. I, I dearly love the name of that. Okay. It's called the Influence and Perception Management <laughs> Office. Yeah which is a term that harkens back to the Reagan administration. Oh. I think under his CIA, he had a, a, a perception management office. I think right. the goal was to kind of try to influence the coverage of the Iran Contra, or the, 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 the Contras yes. in Nicaragua. That's right. Right. And so now they've stood that up in the Pentagon. What's interesting about these agencies that they're working on now is that they're not just disinformation agencies. I found out in the course of this reporting that, uh, for example, in the Department of Homeland Security, there are nearly half a dozen counter disinformation offices. So now they're creating ones to oversee the ones that they already have <laughs> within the agencies and departments. And so um, what I found in this story with the Foreign Malign Influence Office, that's overseeing the ones that are overseeing mm -hmm. all the various uh, agency and departmental efforts. And so this is in the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, which has access to the full suite of intelligence across all components of the intelligence community. So this is really a significant elevation of their efforts. Got it. Well, and can we talk about what these offices are authorized to do? Because that's part of what you get into in the piece and can make a big difference as to you know whether something is nefarious or whether it's just the Pentagon being the Pentagon and doing what it does. Um, there's actually indications that they have pretty serious authority and capabilities in these offices. What are they authorized to do? Yeah, so what was unprecedented about the FMIC is that um, instead of just having access to that specific agency or that specific department, they have uh, full sweeping access to all relevant intelligence that, that they deem um, uh, you know, pertinent to disinformation. And so uh, particularly after her story on which you had us on to discuss, and I appreciate that very much, mm -hmm. about the DHS mm -hmm. efforts, There was it feels like there was a big rebrand on the part of the federal government to say, this is about foreign disinformation. Yes. But when you talk to experts about it, in the age of the internet, it's really hard to differentiate yeah. between foreign So debates. let's get into that. Well, that's they, and that's important. intentionally what, they do that, they blur the line intentionally so right. that they can sweep Americans into the Hamilton 69 dashboard. So if we're like, oh, well, we're talking about uh, Russian disinformation. It's like, well, well, all of a sudden now we're talking about Facebook, and then we're actually talking about election ads. And we're talking about Jill Stein. Or Jill Stein. Yeah. And what, one of the things you pointed out that still annoys the crap out of me was that they, they were going after criticism of the Afghan withdrawal as disinformation. Mm. For example, do you have any more concrete examples you could share with the audience just to put this all into perspective as to why should people be afraid? Like, why should we care if the government is regulating disinformation? Yeah, so to give you guys a brief timeline yeah. of these counter disinformation efforts, it began with 2016, uh, the Russian Active Measures Campaign. Mm -hmm. I mentioned in this story, uh, RAND Corporation Report, which is the most detailed one to date, uh, that actually looked at the hard data and said, okay, what practical effect did the Russian propaganda campaign have? And they take a very dim view of it. Bear in mind, this is a Pentagon-funded think tank, very respected, not the kind of right. like you know highly politicized thing you'd expect from the the think tank world uh, generally. And they say that um, you know while there were Russian efforts, they had almost no uh, practical effect. They were very disorganized, extremely incompetent. Um, you know, all the sorts of terms that you think of when we look at how they're executing the war in Ukraine, it looks like that that's how they carried out this propaganda campaign. And so, um, to, you know, take that very negative view of it and compare with that, this full court press on the part of the federal government and the national security state uh, to respond to this, it just seems like very disproportionate to the, to the right. threat. And there's also an interesting media aspect to this, which is that you know, as you, you put, we were actually talking about Crystal and Kyle's wedding. That you, you, the, this is in the budget. Right. Like this. This is in the federal budget. Yeah. This was not a classified. I mean, I have story based. I've had stories based on classified documents and stuff that's not supposed to be public. This but was this sitting right there. Months. Nobody. Yes. Yeah. That's the other thing. This was uh, um, uh, the the Foreign Malign Influence Center had been debated for years now mm -hmm. publicly, and nobody covered it. Nobody you know? covered it. Yeah. Nobody's even uh, considering what the potential dangers here are. Can I mean? As we watch this behemoth expand, we've had Jacob Siegel on the show to talk about the disinformation industrial complex. We've had you on the show, you and Lee Fong's reporting about the government. It never seems to actually stop anything. Or am I wrong? Are lawmakers actually waking up to this fact? Are they looking into what's changing? Or are they just changing their tactics and rebranding them in different ways? So the previous story that we had on the uh, that, that focused right. on the DHS efforts, um, particularly the countering foreign influence um, 
office, not to be confused with the um, Foreign Influence Task Force of the FBI. Yeah, that's <laughs> There's right. so much overlap between, <laughs> these <different, laughs> between these different entities. Uh, the, the main effect that it's appeared to have so far, to be completely candid with you, is to cause them to drive it underground and become more secretive and disclose mm -hmm. less about it. Because you'll recall, the quadrennial Department of Homeland Security Review came out um, just a week ago, bear in mind like six years past the, the, the date that they were supposed to release mm -hmm. it. And I had originally been uh, leaked in my first story a draft copy of, of what that was. They stripped virtually all mention of any of this from wow. the from the um, quadrennial review that ended up coming out. That's like their big strategy document saying, "This is what we're going to do with the department going forward." Right. I mean, yeah. Go ahead, Emily. Well, I was, was going to say. I mean, it's just insane that they appoint themselves with these massive powers, and then they also sh they just strip away any semblance of transparency whatsoever. So it exists, but you have absolutely no access. They didn't to even what announce doing. the FMIC. Right. So these are multi-million dollar. Do we know some of the individuals who are in charge? I mean, we got that. Remember the czar or whatever her name was. Uh, Nina Jankowitz. Jankowitz. Yeah. That's right. Who, by the way, still America's has, sweetheart. She still has an open invitation. I've invited her many times to come on the show. <laughs> well, we'll keep Ken on. away. Yeah. <laughs> I've invited her. I, I, I will give her as much time as she wants to speak. Um, Ken, do we know any of the figures who were involved here? Yeah, there's a former senior CIA um, uh, official who was, um, I think, one of the top officials for the analytics section of the CIA. There's mm. the um, case officers that you know are wow. work operating on the ground, and they're ones that analyze the intelligence. And so I think reading the tea leaves there, that means they really are going to be collating, gathering, and mm. and you know putting together all of this information from these various uh, agencies that exist, uh, you know, all over the federal government at this point to respond to this. Mm -hmm. Well, remarkable. Ken, fantastic job on the reporting. We're happy to support some of the work that you're doing with The Intercept and all of that and have you ha here on our show. You've always been at the forefront of this and we will continue. So thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Emily, thank you for uh, being a great co-host with me. It was a very ambitious crossover. This uh, concludes today's today. edition of Fascist yes, Live with Regis and Kelly. Points, yeah. <laughs> fascist points. Fascist points. I'm sure, we'll, I'm sure the haters will uh, call, crawl out of the woodwork. It's okay. You know, we, we love our haters as much as we love uh, our lovers. I guess is that is that the way you would say it? Go so ahead. To be clear, though, I am Regis and you are Kelly. There you go. I am. Maybe Kelly. Kathy. I, I fully embrace the uh, <laughs> I fully embrace that role. We love you guys. Thank you very much. Counterpoints is going to be on tomorrow for our normal show, and I'll be back here with Ryan on Thursday. Much love to Crystal on her honeymoon. We mm -hmm. miss her very much dearly. Thank you all to the premium subscribers to support our work. We will see you all later. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.